today's video, we will be taking a look at a neutron irradiated mercury dime. This coin is from 1943. This date is important because before 1965, when the Coinage Act was passed, dimes were comprised of silver and copper. 90% silver, 10% copper. But once the Coinage Act was passed, it switched over to an alloy between nickel and copper. The reason why silver is needed for this reaction is that copper and nickel alloys don't react the same way when struck with a neutron that silver does. Patrons of the Atomic Museum would bring in a silver coin. Then the machine would load it into a lead lined container with beryllium and antimony 124. The antimony outputs an alpha particle. This alpha particle would interact with the beryllium 9, causing it to change into carbon 12 and have a neutron output. The antimony was later replaced to plutonium 239. The reason why is antimony has a decay of 60 days, meaning it would need to be recharged in a nuclear reactor. But plutonium 239 decays in around 24,000 years. A ne neutron output is needed from this reaction to take place. When the neutron hits the silver 108, it causes it to change to silver 110, irradiating the coin. Silver 110 only has a half-life around 25.6 seconds before it decays away rapidly. Before that happens, the coin is dropped past Geiger counter measuring the radiation before the coin is encased with a piece of plastic, a metal casing, and a piece of paper that states American Museum of Atomic Energy, neutron irradiated. In 1967, the neutron irradiator was shut down. This was a main part of the coinage act. The museum tried to keep it going by getting dime rolls and sorting the silver ones out, but it inevitably shut down leaving only about a million neutron irradiated coins left.